garden and landscape maintenance and upkeep can be brutal depending on what kind of jobs you have to do but particularly in the summer when things are growing like crazy and insects are all over the place and plants are getting diseases and deadheading is necessary yikes there can be so much to do so i want to take you through some of the little jobs that i have on my plate today you feel so fortunate when your flowers are plentiful and things really begin to flourish until deadheading becomes part of the responsibility and my blanket flowers which are big and luscious and plentiful all over my yard need tons and tons of deadheading and that is a job that gets extremely tedious i have uh many hundreds of these to cut off today It is definitely not the coolest of mornings to be doing yard work, but I've deadheaded my blanket flowers in the backyard, and now I have to do all the ones in the front yard. Ugh. So when our house was first constructed, we had some of these like standard pieces of landscaping put in for us. And this area right behind me is one of those spots. So I have sort of this weeping, a uh, holly bush, I guess, standing in the middle here, and I have some knockout rose bushes in the front. Well, the knockout rose bushes have done terribly for me. They started out okay, maybe the first couple of years, but after that, I kept fighting disease and sickness from them, and it got to the point that I no longer want to take care of them. I have so many things that need maintenance all the time. The knockout roses have got to go. So my son and I are going to take out the heavy artillery to try to get these rose bushes out of here and have a little fun while we're doing it. So removing a rose bush. All you're gonna do, take your tie down, wrap it around nice and tight. Hook her right on the back of your four-wheeler, and there you go. All right, so just remind me how to do this again. Oh, gosh, this seat's hot. Ah! So the choke's on. You're just going to turn this key here. You're going to hold down the start button. It's going to start. Your shifter is right down here. So here's a little note, don't use an old fraying tie down. Okay, sickly, diseased rose bushes have been removed. We are sufficiently cleaned up at the moment and also sufficiently sweaty and dirty. It's probably only like 10 a.m. and I'm ready to go get an ice cream cone or something. But alas, there is more to do. 
While pulling the bushes out with the four-wheeler was fun, the other fun part is going to come when I pick what is going to be planted there next. I have no idea what that's going to be, but I do think I'm gonna wait till it's a little bit cooler out so that my new plants, whatever I choose, doesn't have to suffer like I am right now. So as I'm outside just trying to enjoy my garden, enjoy the nature around me, see these Leland cypress right behind me. They're outside my fence line. So I noticed on them that they had something that looked like pine cones. Bunch of brown pine cones all over the place. But when I got a little closer to inspect them, I found out they are not pine cones at all. So what does this mean? More maintenance. If you start to notice little tiny brown sacks like this, they're almost just the pine needles wrapped up in sap. If you notice those on your pine trees. Now this is a Leland Cypress, but I also saw them on one of my Arborvitae trees. Get them off because they are bagworms. Oh, luckily these little sacks are easy to just pull off unless maybe you've had one from the year before uh, those are a little bit bigger and harder to get off and they're also a darker brown. These are almost like a burnt sienna, if you will. So they could be fairly tiny, but they can also be very plentiful. So right here, you probably can't see because it's a little bit too high, but I have a whole bunch right in an area. I can still reach it here, but I am going to need a ladder for this job. Trees are an investment, an investment in money and in time. So we absolutely want to do whatever we can to take care of these guys. So bagworms must go. So the bagworm larvae spins its cocoon using little bits of foliage of the tree that it's inside of. And so what's happening is that that happens and then the bagworms actually feed on your trees. You're gonna start to notice brown spots if that is happening and then the foliage begins to die and you want to make sure that you catch this problem as early as possible because obviously we want to get rid of them before they damage the tree so badly that the tree can't recover. I think even though I see a whole bunch, I mean I see a whole bunch, I'm going to be hand picking every single one and I have done a bunch of them already and then you want to dispose of them away from your property, right? Um, but the other thing is if there's going to be super hard to reach places, I'm on a ladder now, I can use a mixture of Dawn dish soap and water and actually spray some super high spots. And just like uh, Dawn and water is a bug killer for other things as well, this should also kill the larvae that are inside of those cocoons. So that is my mission for now is to get all these bagworms out of my precious trees. By the way, I am not noticing anything moving inside of these cocoons right now, but I guess, um, I think it's like the male caterpillar or something could be inside of some of these cocoons and it comes out at certain times. So when I had made a nice little nifty pile of the cocoons on the ground before, I noticed little caterpillars starting to come out of those. So I must have picked the ones in which the male caterpillar was. This removing the bagworm job stinks. I am not having fun. These smaller sacks are the ones from this year and the larger sack is the one from last year. So unfortunately I had a mini problem last year but this year's has gotten worse. So the summer garden maintenance can be brutal. I did okay with the deadheading. I mean, it's a tedious job, but you know, you gotta get that done. 
of course doing the four wheeler and pulling out the rose bushes with my son <laughs> despite a little bit of difficulty was that was fun but the bagworms oh my gosh i am dying now i'm not even done but i have some tremendous piles of the cocoons that i have to dispose of at this point and i i'm just i need to take a break because it is extremely extremely hot so do you have any tasks that you particularly hate doing in the garden, especially in the summer heat? I'm curious. I really want to know. So please share in the comments below. I am Nicole. This is my Carolina garden. I am in southeastern North Carolina. Thank you so much for watching my video and happy planting.